Welcome back. Part three of tutorial 20, our first IP table script. This is total lockdown. Sounds like a game show. Um, but what we have at the moment is we have our server configured uh, along with two clients. So if you've been following through parts one and part two, we all we've done so far is set up three virtual box virtual machines all running CentOS 6.6 all with a full GUI and all pinging each other, both on public and private networks. So we can ping our IPT uh, CLT1 on the private, if I could spell, and we can ping it on the public. Excellent. And all of the pingings are round tripping. We can go for two, and we did this at the end of the last video. I just thought I'd show again. It's all still up running. And our machine here has IP tables on it because it comes as standard. You can do an IP tables minus L and you can actually see what the current status of our IP tables is. I'll tell you what, let's clear that and do that again. So it's accepting all from anywhere. It's accepting all ICMP ping requests from anywhere. It's accepting, it's rejecting ICMP with host prohibited. So this is the default standards. Here's our three chains, our input, our forward and our output. We will be modifying input and output. And at the moment, this machine is wide open. It's uh, available for use on the internet and it's attackable. And basically, it's, you know, it's default is that it's available on the network for use. So our first script is going to be total lockdown. Because we want to turn off any ability to touch this machine at all, to get access to this machine. So what I'm going to do is just cd, and I should be in slash root, and I'm going to make a directory called scripts, because we're going to iterate between these scripts, we're going to build it up slowly. So first steps first, we're going to VI. Um, what I am going to do, my keyboard is acting up and rather spend rather than spend ages messing around with the keyboard, um, I'm going to just grab the uh, hash into um, my buffer. So you won't need to do that, maybe, maybe you will. Um, keyboards are a bit of a pain sometimes. So I'm going to VI total uh, lockdown dot sh and the first thing I'm going to add is our shebang so we're going to have a shell script and this is going to lock down this machine it's going to allow no access whatsoever so hopefully after we run this script um, it will set IP tables in such a way that our other two machines will not be able to gain access to this machine at all, even for a ping. So the first thing we're going to need to do is do is flush IP tables. Basically get rid of everything that's in there at the moment. And that's done by the IT IP tables minus capital F. Flush it. Then we're going to set new rules and we're going to say IP tables, but we're going to set these at the chain level the P for policy level. And we're going to say on the input, we're going to drop everything. We're going to say IP tables minus, and our policy again, on our forward, we're going to drop. And then we're going to say IP tables minus P output, we're going to drop all of those as well. How do we make those active? We're going to say service IP tables. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do first. We'll save that configuration. Then we're going to go service IP tables restart. Because I want to save it as I go as well. And that's it. That is a total lockdown machine. Now, if you ran this in the cloud, you would no longer have any access to that server on 
any Ethernet port whatsoever. This will take that action. It will drop everything on both Ethernet interfaces. So whatever you do, do not run this script on one of your cloud instances. If you're trying to follow this and actually set this up on a cloud and on software, um, don't run this because you won't gain access anymore. And then you'll have to start up your browser and go to IPMI and get to the console and log in on the console. So if you're following it on VBox, which is why I'm doing it on VBox, we're obviously on the console. We have access to this machine. So we're okay. That's why I'm doing the learning on VBox and then I'm gonna take the scripts up to the cloud. So let's save that. Let's uh, chmod700 dot slash total lockdown. Let's do an IP tables minus L just to remind ourselves, <laughs> uppercase L, of what's there at the moment. And let's run total lockdown. There you go. Saving the firewall rules, set up the new chains. And what does it look like now? Oh, look. Where we had defaults of accept before, so let's take the chain input. Its policy was to accept. And then it had some rules within that. What we have now is chain input policy, drop it. I don't want anything. Same on forward and same on output. We have a total lockdown machine. Now, Let's bring in one of our other machines. This is client two, I'll tell you what, I'll do it in logical fashion. I'll bring in client one. We were just pinging a second ago. If I now ping IPT server, hang. And let's bring in I, IPT I've just typed IPT for the password. Um, and we ping IPT server, hanging. Both of those. Getting nothing. Indeed, if we go back on here, onto our server, and we go ping um, IPT CLT1 on the private, Operation is not permitted. We're not even allowed to do it. We should get the same for two, and we'll get the same on the public. So this machine is, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, sacrosanct. It cannot be touched at all. So that's total lockdown. That's script one, IP table script one. Total lockdown. You may want this sometimes, you know, to do some work on a server and you want, you don't want any traffic coming in while you're working on it. Unlikely, I can think of maybe a couple of use cases, but not very many, because you at least want to be able to do something with a server in this world of ours of internet access. You want to be able to get something, but it's handy to know how to totally lock down a server. And that's how you do it. So let's take one more look at Total lockdown. In fact, I'll clear the screen because it'll be easier to see. All we did was IP tables minus F, IP tables minus P. Set our policies to drop for all of our chains. Saved it and restarted. And that's how it did it. So I guess we want to do the opposite now. We want to do the antonym. So how would we actually get our machine to accept everything? You know, could we configure it in such a way that we can have the total opposite and make it, let's say, wide open? 